Hi guys. So it's weird because you can see me, but I can't see you. This is going to be so strange, but we're going to get used to it. So this is our first reading lesson for um, our remote learning, and it's going to be very different from what we do in class, but I'm going to use the same materials that we did use while we were actually in class together. So for today's lesson, what you need is you need to have your reading sheet out, your reading comprehension sheet, and it should be 5.3 or unit 5, week 3, and it should say problem and solution, and the story is how Ben Franklin stole lightning. And then you also need your reading book out. Um, I only sent your big one home because it's the one we're going to be reading this story out of, okay? And you should be on page 406, and your story should look a little something like this, how Ben Franklin stole lightning. Okay, so before we really dive into the story and those types of aspects, first we're going to talk about kind of what this entire uh, reading is going to be about. And our essential question is, how can inventions solve problems? Which we have a lot of different problems in the world at different times, and, and right now our biggest problem is COVID-19, and there are scientists out there who are trying to create a vaccine, something to cure this virus or to prevent us from getting it again. So it's kind of a good time to talk about inventions and, and how they're gonna solve problems. Um, with this being said, as you can see, we have the word problems. So our skill that we're gonna talk about is problems and solutions. We have a problem, how are we going to solve it? Um, we're gonna build a little background first. So um, everything we're talking about is problems and solutions. So here's a problem for you. Um, let's talk about how um, gas prices have rose. Gas gets super expensive. In some places like California, it could be up to $5 a gallon. Well, how do people solve that problem? One thing they can do is, one thing something did, is they made a car that doesn't use as much gas. So we have those little tiny electric cars that don't use as much gas and use more of electricity. So they solve the problem of not having to pay for such expensive gas because they're using electricity instead of gas. Um, inventors always try and fix problems. Um, and we have new inventions and old inventions. So when we talk about the older inventions, those inventions have obviously changed over time. But when we talk about inventions, somebody had to create that invention, right? And so the story we're reading today or this week is gonna be all about Ben Franklin. And when we're reading about Ben Franklin, it's gonna be more of an informational text. And specifically that type of genre is actually gonna be biography. And a biography is a story about a person's life written by another person. And uh, the subject of the biography is often the person who is contributing something special to society. So Ben Franklin did something special for the world and to our society, so somebody's writing a story about him and about all of his accomplishments. Uh, it's normally got different events in that person's life, and it's going to go in chronological order, which we've talked about that word before. Chronological is like time order. So from when he was born to his first accomplishment, to his next one, to his next one, all the way up until possibly his death. Now, not every biography is going to have a death because some people are still alive that have biographies written about them. Um, it's going to include different types of uh, text features, such as like timelines, photographs, especially of maybe the person that you're talking about or an invention that they created. And it's going to also have captions. Um, so when we go into our story, you're going to talk specifically about problem and solution. And you want to identify a problem first, and then you're going to identify the steps that are taken to solve that problem. And so on your sheet of paper this week, you're going to specifically see, I'm going to share my screen with you. You're going to see this piece of paper, and it's going to say problem and solution. So when we are reading our story, or when you're listening to your story, read the whole story first get the idea of what's happening, 
what kind of problems are happening, and then go back and reread and answer these questions. And it's gonna tell you on these pages, like page 410 to 411 is gonna be your first problem. So they give you your problem, and then you need to go back and reread to find out what steps are being taken and what would be your solution. How did they solve this problem? So they're gonna give you actually three different problems, and then you need to find those three solutions, but they're also gonna give you the solution, and then you need to work backwards to figure out, okay, this is what they solved, why did they have to solve this problem? What was the problem to begin with? Okay, so that's kind of what's happening with our problem and solution. Um, to find the problems and the solution, you can often look for those those um, like keywords that say as a result of or in conclusion or consequently um, this happened because those types of words are what you're going to find in order to find your solutions. Um, also, when you're reading this, you might uh, have to kind of summarize a little bit. Say, it's not gonna be the little details, like this detail, this detail, this detail. It's gonna be putting them all together, getting that big idea, that main idea of um, what's happening in this selection of text. So it should be short and a part of the summer of the story to summarize, here's your problem, here's your solution. It's not gonna be a long, lengthy summarization. It's more, here's your problem, here's your solution. I just summarized what that was about. So we're gonna talk a little bit about um, our vocabulary words first. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing and we're gonna go back to this. So our vocabulary words, you're gonna see them um, when we talk about, or when you go and go ahead and do your, your paper on the back side, it's gonna have you pick three highlighted words. Well, I want you to understand what those words mean before you pick them. So our first word is dizzy. Now this picture just kind of makes me dizzy looking at it. When you feel dizzy, you feel like you're spinning around about to fall. And this example says that Noah felt dizzy after spinning around on the grass. So you can ask yourself, what are some things that make you feel dizzy? I know like um, there's things on the playground that make you guys really dizzy. You guys just spin and spin and spin. That would be you being dizzy. Okay, our next word is going to be experiment. Now I'm kind of sad because we don't get to do any more experiments together, but you can always do experiments at home. So the, the definition of experiment is a test that is used to discover or prove something by watching results very carefully. Here's your example. Tony did an experiment in class to determine the acidity of certain liquid, of a certain liquid. So we ask ourselves why might scientists do experiments? Well, they're trying to fall, um, they're trying to find a solution to something and they have to experiment it first, try it to see if it's actually gonna work. You don't just say, oh, I know the solution to this, here you go, and then it doesn't work. So you have to experiment to try it first to find out um, what's going to happen and you're gonna prove it by experimenting. All right, our next word is genuine. Genuine is when something is real or what seems to be. So your example here is, um, are these two paintings in a museum genuine or fakes? So when we talk about this, is, is it a real, is that the real picture, the one that was first created or is it a replica, is it a fake? Most of the time when you go to a museum, you see the real things, unless it's a super, super important piece where somebody may have created a, a replica or a fake of it so that it doesn't get damaged when it is out in the public eye and people may have touched it or, or um, the air dries it out talking about like maybe an oil painting. But like when you go to Washington DC, you may go on and go see the Declaration of Independence. Well, the Declaration of Independence is gonna be probably hidden away in a sealed case behind the scenes where they're gonna put a fake or a replica of that out. So the one that you see is not going to be the genuine Declaration of Independence. It's not gonna be the real thing. And that's okay. We wanna keep those important documents safe, but that means that it wouldn't be the genuine one. Uh, what could be a synonym for genuine? Well, we said it, the genuine one would be real, so um, why don't we just use the word real or true, it's a true thing. All right, next word, this one I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on, it's hilarious. It says hilarious means very funny. It says the hilarious movie made the boy laugh nonstop. What's an antonym for hilarious? Not funny. Okay, mischief. 
Mischief is a behavior that causes minor harm or annoyance. Now, Mrs. Skrilly can tell you a lot about mischief. Remember my cat causes mischief? She brings in animals. To me, is annoying, and it's causing harm to the animal, but that's mischief. Or Mrs. Skrilly's dog, Dixie, might take Clara's toys outside. That's also mischief. This one says the dog got into the mischief and chewed up the pillow from the couch. Ask yourself, what kind of mischief might a cat get into with a ball of yarn, or if you have any pets, do they cause mischief? Next word is nowadays. Nowadays means in the present day, like right now. Nowadays, many people drive smaller cars to conserve gas. Nowadays, people are staying inside and staying home to practice social distancing. Uh, why, explain why nowadays many people don't use pay phones. If you don't know what a payphone is, it's a phone on the outside in public where you put coins in to have to call somebody. So why do we not use uh, payphones now? And ask yourself that question. And next word is politician. So a politician is a person who holds or seeks a government office. <clears throat> the politician is hoping that the voters will elect her to state senate. So you might think of a politician in Nebraska as maybe Governor Pete Ricketts, or um, maybe the mayor of Norfolk, or the president of the United States is a politician. I mean, he's running for something where he does need to get elected. And our question we can ask ourselves is why are voters important to politicians? If nobody votes for them, they're not gonna get chosen. They're not gonna get elected. And our last word is procedure. Okay, so a procedure is the proper way of doing something, usually by a series of steps. Now, we've talked about this word in science before, maybe when Mrs. Johnson was with you, but my definition of procedure is um, a step-by-step -step in instruction to follow something. That's the science definition, is a step-by-step -step instruction. This one just happens to say is a proper way of doing something, usually a series of steps. Okay, so the surgeons followed the hospital procedure by sterilizing their hands. When we follow the procedure to wash our hands, we take 20 seconds, maybe sing yourself a song, happy birthday, or um, another short song that you can sing that, or count to 20, 20 seconds. That's part of your procedure of washing your hands. And you always wash in between your fingers, um, over your hands, your thumbs. That's a procedure that we need to follow very carefully, especially nowadays. I use another word. So why do we follow steps in a procedure? Well, you wanna get the best results, right? And um, we've talked about this in math too. You can't just skip steps because you may not get the right answer. If you skip steps of washing your hands, you're not gonna get all the germs off. All right, so I am not going to read the story to you. I left a link, or not a link, but a button that will play the story aloud for you on the Google slide. So I want you to either read it yourself or read it with your mommy or dad or your siblings, or you can listen to it. Now read the whole story first, listen to the whole story first, and then go back and start answering your questions. You have all week to do this. So I want you to take your time. If you have any questions, let me know. Now I'm gonna share my screen one more time with you, and I'm gonna just quickly talk about the other things, okay? So um, when you're, Done with your first page, you have those problems and solutions to do. You have a couple questions, and they are just comprehension questions, making sure you're understanding. How did Ben Franklin steal lightning from the sky? Now, he's not taking the lightning out of the sky. You need to figure out what does that mean? What does it mean when he says they steal lightning? So why was Ben Franklin presented with so many medals and awards? Right there, I'm telling you that Ben Franklin had accomplishments, right? We're reading about his life. So why was he presented with so many awards? What is the author's point of view on the subject of this biography? Remember when we talked about author's point of view, we said it's how the author thinks or feels. So when we're talking about the author's point of view about this, on the subject of this biography, the subject is Ben Franklin. How does that author think or feel about Ben Franklin? Does he like him? Does he not? Look for those feeling words. What word and phrase in the text reveals this point of view? So we're looking for words or phrases that tell you how they feel. Look for those feeling words. And on the back side, um, the, Greek root, the Greek roots, if you want to try to guess what the meaning is, go for it. But this is not something we have to do. So if you want to skip this part, go for it. 
Next, our genre. We've talked about our biography. How do you know that this is a biography? Well, is it talking about somebody's life? Did that person write the story? Or is, is it um, a story written by an author about somebody else? Okay, think about what we talked about. Does it have text features? Are those text features maybe a timeline, pictures, things like that? Then we're gonna go to our essential question is, how did the invention from the lightning rod solve the problem? Well, they kind of gave you an answer, but I want you to answer this question again. How did the invention of the lightning rod solve the problem? Tell me how it solved it. List those steps of how it solved it. And the last thing down here, it says choose three highlighted vocabulary words from the text and complete the chart. I want you to tell me the word and then the definition as it's used in the text. Now I can quick give you an example. So if I think I'm gonna use the word dizzy, I found it on page 411 and it says, in, and in case climbing stairs made him dizzy, he invented a long wooden arm that could grab his books too. So um, climbing upstairs made him dizzy. We can go back to the definition of dizzy and we said um, makes you feel spinning around or about to fall. So if you're climbing stairs can make you feel like you're going to fall. It's in your words. It's using the text. Take the definition and use that. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions? This is just needs to get done by Friday. And I want you to just take quick, take a picture of your sheet of paper and post it to Seesaw. You'll see it says reading unit five week three or unit 5.3 reading unit 5.3. I can't remember exactly, but then just take a picture of the back and the front and just post it to Seesaw. Super simple. If you have questions, please let me know. Okay. All right. Don't forget that the, the link is also next to it is the audio so you can listen to the story. Okay. All right. Have fun. And I will see you on Wednesday for your math lesson.